so as you can tell by the title in today's video I'm going to be talking about being young and unemployed and how hard it is to be able to find a job being my age, um, being the school leaving age um, and yeah I have a cuppa but it is a cuppa of milkshake because it is way too hot to be drinking tea it's just ridiculous i'm sweating now so why i decided to put a shirt on i pff, don't know i really don't um but we're here and i've got my notes in front of me so i don't forget anything and let's just get straight into it so the first thing i wanted to talk about was my previous jobs i've only had a few jobs since i've left school um i left coming up to two years ago and 2016 2016 yeah in 2016 um but it took me a year to actually find a job i think i left i want to say i left in may but i didn't find a job um or a paying job until march of 2017 um i applied for loads of jobs i applied online i went into shops and handed my CV in, I sent it off to um, like human resources places and I was applying for like retail um, makeup as well because this I just finished I think I just finished my college course um, and became a makeup artist so my main aim was trying to get into makeup um, but it just got to the point where I ended up just applying for anything. Um, I applied for, I can't even remember, I think it was a digital marketing job um, as an apprentice. And it was through an agency and I signed on with a recruitment agency. And I got the interview, went to the interview. This was like the first proper interview and I didn't actually get any help from the recruitment agency about it. Um, once I got the interview, I didn't hear anything from them. Um, so I managed to do that on my own, which I was actually quite proud of myself. Um, and I think it was probably a few days later, something like that. Uh, the recruitment agency called and said that I didn't get the job. I think there were four, I want to say it was like four, there were four or five of us and four of us didn't get the job. I don't know if they ended up taking anyone on, I can't actually remember, but they think I didn't get it because of my lack of experience, which to this day still makes no sense to me because I'd left school, only work experience I had was a week in um, a beauty salon for my work experience and I'd apply for an apprenticeship and with an apprenticeship you usually don't have any experience um, or you have little to none experience so that was a little bit of a right so how am I supposed to get experience if no one gives me the chance to work there even if it's for like a few days just so I actually can say yes I've put this on my CV I've done a few days here and I gained this experience and this is what I've done then I think I applied for more jobs um either got rejected or just didn't hear anything and then my nan's partner um asked at his dental practice um whether they needed a receptionist or if they needed just they needed someone um, and luckily the people had literally only just bought the place and needed a receptionist so I became a receptionist um, oh no before that I applied for a job at Benefit in Debenhams um, but I got to the interview and didn't get the job because I didn't have any customer service experience so again I don't know how I was supposed to gain that so instead, my nan then took me to a pop-up shop near where she lives, um, and it was a Priscilla Bacon pop-up shop, and I volunteered, volu I volunteered there for about a month, 
until I then got the job at the dental practice which was literally next door to it but because I loved working in the um, shop so much I didn't want to just kind of leave because sometimes it was hard for them to find volunteers to replace um, the days and the hours you were doing there so I'd done I think when I first started at the practice I was off on Wednesdays so I'd done full day Monday and Friday and done a half day Tuesday and Thursday to work at the shop and then that kind of fizzled out and ended up going um, full slash part time at the practice because I still had the Wednesdays off Uh, I worked at the practice from March till December of last year and there's a whole story as to why I left. While I was still at the practice I started for applying for other jobs. I applied for a different job, I can't even remember what that job was but um, no I can't remember but the, I got a call from another recruitment agency who found me through this um, job searching site and said we have this job for you we think you might fit it perfectly since you're, you've been on the phones obviously at the receptionist and it was at a call centre and I went for the interview the people there were so lovely and got the job and this was January? yeah it was the beginning of this year um, and when I was supposed, I was start. I was told I was starting on the fifteenth of January. Got a call the week before. Um, I think it was like on the Monday, and they're like, "Brittany, is is this Brittany Thompson?" I'm like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Are you where you're supposed to start today?" I'm like, "No, I was told next week." So it kind of got off to a shaky start. When I did get started there, I got some training, which was great because I didn't actually get any training in the practice um, because we were so busy the day that. I started at the practice so I literally just had to kind of learn it on my own um, I got I want to say a week's training in the call centre I picked up all the product knowledge and I was really really looking forward to it I felt really confident about it went out into the group I was originally supposed to be in and I just completely lost all confidence um, I have always found it so difficult on the phone like I used to have panic attacks or near a panic attack or start shaking and sweating and I just couldn't go on the phone um, even when I used to, have to talk to my granny in London I still used to get really nervous so for me going from not being able to pick up the phone like I still can't always pick up my mobile if I don't know the number or the house phone if I don't know the number I can't answer it um or depending on what my confidence is like that day but for me going from not being able to answer the phone to becoming a receptionist and being able to pick up the phone really easily I thought yeah I'm in a call center I'm the one that's making the calls not answering the calls all the time so I should be fine turns out I wasn't um and again I was really anxious I didn't even want to go in because I knew that was the main part of my job um so I left that um because I wish I would have been able to stay but I was so anxious again that I didn't want to go into work and I couldn't feel like that all the time it was I started to explain it was just horrible it was horrible and I couldn't stick it out I knew I couldn't physically stick it out until I found something else which brings me to now um so I have been job hunting since January since I left um and I have been for one interview since yeah I think it's just the one interview um at Laura Mercier oh my wrist just clicked then didn't get that because again my lack of experience and there's quite a lot of responsibility that came with the job role um, and again it's horrible because um, the lack of experience is that one thing that's holding me back but 
I, I just, it's just so annoying because obviously I understand that employers want someone that they could easily train, they can train them within like a week or so and feel like they can just get on with a job. Whereas with a school leaver, someone my age, someone even a bit older, they feel like it's just too much and that they just want someone that they can get in straight away and get the job done. Um, which sucks, but hey ho, what can you do? As you can probably tell from what I've said, it's like a constant cycle of applying for a job, potentially getting the interview, and if you do get the interview, maybe then getting rejected because you don't have any experience. But they knew that you didn't have any experience or you didn't have much experience because you gave them your CV and on your CV it says this is a job that I've done, this is what I had to do here. So it's kind of like I basically told you by me applying and handing my CV to you being like I don't have a lot of experience but here's the experience that I do have, this is what I can offer but it's like you've just ignored it. So it is like a constant cycle of you get your hope up and it gets dropped because yet again the same reason. To be honest I do have days where I start to lose hope on me actually ever being able to get a job and I know it sounds so dramatic but when you get rejected so many times for the same reason it gets to the point where it's like am I actually going to be able to get a job because if this is going to be the constant reason I'm screwed there's no way I can do it. It's a bit, it's a bit sucky I'm not gonna lie. Um, I hope anyone who's like my age or younger watching this doesn't feel like they haven't got any hope. You do, it just takes a really long time and it is an emotional roller coaster. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm trying to be really honest here um, on my experience and how I'm feeling at the moment. Um, but you'll, you'll get there eventually, it just takes a lot of time. Yeah, you'll get there, it's fine. You don't have to worry. Just gotta keep kind of fighting through it. And if you do end up getting the interview and you don't get the job and they don't tell you the reason you don't get the job originally, um, ask them and ask if it was like you're interviewing, is there any tips that they could give you? Um, or if it's not the way you interviewed, like for me, every time I've had an interview and I've not gotten the job, they've been like, your interviewing's great, you're very much off your age, you just don't have the experience. So ask them if they don't tell you so you can learn to improve that to maybe then get the next job that you apply for. I feel like with my generation, we can be very picky with our jobs because obviously we've gone into college for to study something that we actually want to do um and we're so set on wanting to do that job because that is a job that yes we want to stick with and we want to have for however long we work for or whether it's till we retire till we are able to retire at an early age or if we die doing the job um but we want to be happy because we've seen like our parents be like oh, I have to go to work and like it's a forced kind of thing and I don't want to feel that way and a lot of the time when I first started applying for the jobs I was applying for makeup jobs because that is what I want to do but it wasn't working out so then I started to apply for more like sales jobs and marketing and social media stuff because of YouTube and the social media that I do um, so I have that kind of personal experience with it and I have got on my CV that I have multiple YouTube channels and a blog so that they know I'm aware of being present online and how to get the word out there online if I do go for marketing or social media. It's just kind of about... Why did that sound like someone was in our garden? I'm not ready to die today. I'd like to die employed please. You start to lose hope but you do also have days where you're like do you know what I've applied for three jobs today there's one that I really want and there's a couple there that pay good and there's another one that will fit around the hours for what I want to do as a hobby um 
it's just kind of like picking up the positives of being unemployed and searching for a job um like a positive at the moment although it is boiling hot i am not working while it's boiling hot i can enjoy the sun and i'm not sat in a sweltering office because when i was working at the practice during summer last year because it was an old building it was just boiling hot and we couldn't open all the windows um, and the fans were so old that they would literally just circulate dust around the place so at least now I can actually enjoy the hot weather um, even though I'm sat inside but I'm you get what I mean <laughs> another thing that does suck is I'm starting to see my bank balance go down and it means that obviously I can't really go out and go to dinner with my friends or I can't go out to dinner with my mum and her friends or my friends as well um, because I want to save but also I'm currently paying for a college course for my special effects but there are certain bits of coursework that I can't do there because I don't have the tools although I have the special effects kit which is actually down there I don't have everything in it I need um, but I can't afford to get it at the moment because I'm saving my money or what's left of it so it's a vicious cycle um, I'm not able to put money in a month to my savings for my makeup business and I'm not able to give mum the board money that I was paying um, by choice by the way there was a whole debate on this morning about that I've gone from being able to pay for myself to either not being able to do anything or having to rely on someone else again and it sucks but uh, not much you can do I'm selling stuff on Depop um, I'm clearing out my wardrobe and things that I don't want anymore things that are brand new that I've never used and selling them on Depop to earn a little bit of extra money to put together um, as a backup if any of you are actually interested that's actually what all them clothes back there are <laughs> that's all the stuff that I'm getting rid of um, but yeah, if you are interested and you want to help help me out a little bit, I'll pop my Depop up the top there and in the description. <laughs> um, it's a little cheeky self promo, but yeah. And also just not being able to do anything. And if I do want to do anything, it has to be where I don't have to spend a lot of money. <laughs> like a maximum, a pound. <laughs> I'm joking, but yeah, it sucks. But... Then again, you do kind of appreciate. And then again, actually, now I realise how ridiculous my spending was because I had money. Um, because obviously, I'd never had that much money before. I wasn't like loaded, don't get me wrong. But I had more money than what I had now. And my spending habits were a bit ridiculous. Now I'm a lot more aware of my spending. And I budget better because I used to budget but I never used to stick to the budget. Another thing is um, how I've heard some people say how the younger generation are lazy and that we don't want to work and we just think things should be handed to us which does irritate me. Um, you don't hear it as much now but when I first left school I heard it a few times and it really really annoyed me because it's not that we don't want to work it's that we're not giving the opportunity to work like even my nan says when she was younger if one person left one job they could literally just walk into the next because of who they know and now it's a case of not who you know it's what you know and it sucks when it comes to job wise and sometimes it is who you know but with my experience, most of the time it is what you know. And if you don't know a lot or you don't have a lot of experience, you're screwed. <laughs> it's really irritate me when I hear people say that. And like, um, when I went out with my nan yesterday and we went to Costa and it was mostly the older generation that were out, I feel like I stick out like a sore thumb, like, are people thinking she should be at school or she should be at work why isn't she working and I do I think it's something it's like a mental thing that I've done to myself but it does feel like I don't fit into the daytime generation type thing the, the people that are out during the day I should be out at night once I finish work um, 
so that's another thing. You, f I feel like I'm. I don't know. It's hard to explain. I don't know. It's just weird. It's just it's just another weird thing. Ouch! That was my finger that I've noticed. But a lot more people now that it's been in the newspaper and on the news a bit people are now more aware of how difficult it is for people my age to be able to get a job I will say the biggest or one of the best things I have found whilst being unemployed is that one I've been able to work on my YouTube channels and my blogs a lot more um, I'm putting more effort into them and because I can film during the day and edit during the day I have more time um, and I'm not having to force something out on this like film on the Saturday edit on the Saturday for it to be up on Sunday I can kind of chill and set a schedule for filming and blog writing and yeah it's been really really nice because I feel like I've fallen back in love with my channels um because back when I didn't have a job when I first left school I was working really hard on them and it was really really fun and that felt like work to me and I was trying to do the whole nine to five hours <laughs> um of doing uh YouTube and blogging um so that was great that is great and another thing is I've been able to work on myself like I've built my confidence back up my anxiety isn't as high um and I'm a lot more aware of my feelings and I can now kind of be like okay this isn't a good day you're not feeling great maybe we should do something that will cheer us up maybe we should just kind of sit and chill and go through it and then carry on with the day rather than trying to push myself through it like I used to do so I'm definitely a lot happier in that way and honestly I'm back to spending more time with my nan which is great <laughs> because when I wasn't working as much I didn't see her as much which sucks because me and my nan are like this we're like Tweedledee and Tweedledum we are like What's another pair? We're like Ant and Deck. We are like... Who else? I don't know. We're just like, we're just really close. So being able to spend more time with her is great. Um, I think that's it. I don't think I have much else to talk about. Oh, another great thing is I get to see my bunnies more as well, actually because I only saw them in the morning then at night but now like oh, I just love them they're so sweet <laughs> but yeah um I think that's everything yeah um if you enjoyed this video or if you found it interesting give it a thumbs up and subscribe um if you guys wanted a video on interviewing um and cv writing I'd be happy to do one of them um my dad helped me a lot with my CV, so I've picked up a lot of good tips and also the amount of CVs I've had to write and like adjust for myself. I would be happy to do that as well as with interviewing because I know interviewing can be quite difficult and considering I didn't really have much help with interviewing, I feel like I could probably help out maybe, I don't know, but if you are interested in that leave a comment or a like or something just to let me know. Um, and other than that, I will see you in the next video, whenever that may be. <laughs> Bye.